Welcome back to the House Human Services Committee on um, Wednesday, February 16th. And this part of the morning, we're going to be um, uh, uh, focused on the uh, um, legislation um, that will become a committee bill around the opioid settlement and setting up a um, a process by which that money will be distributed or whatever. And um, uh, I have um, asked the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, um, Karen uh, Horn, to comment um, because if you recall from our walkthrough of the bill with legislative council, they have a role. And Karen was sort of surprised, maybe not. Um, but Karen, why don't you take it away with your, um, you had some comments and testimony. Yeah, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, my name's Karen Horn and I represent the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And I'm gonna say at the start, thank you for getting me to focus on this bill. There are two of us following issues in the legislature this year. And it just seems like there is an awful lot of legislation um, affecting local governments. So uh, when you focus me, that's a really good thing. <laughs> um, so uh, I, we also do think that um, this is an ambitious bill and you've got $63 million over 18 years, I guess, to accomplish everything that that is contemplated in that bill, um, I hope it can happen. Uh, I do have a couple of questions, which I sent to the chair a little while ago. Um, I, I think it might be helpful to say on page two exactly who the committee is advising. Um, you, you say that it has the support of the Department of Health, but it, it just might be um, helpful to make that clear. Uh, we, uh, I did have a question about how the number of nine representatives from local government was arrived at. It seems like maybe you were trying to balance the um, local, the number of local people with the other appointees of the committee. But I would have um, to, yeah. Karen, I was going to answer that for you. Um, that's a requirement of the settlement that um, okay. the, the settlement, um, the national settlement has put some requirements on the distribution and um, part one of the requirements is that there be some kind of advisory or some committee in charge of doing that. And right. the members need to be um, half representing local and half the state. And um, okay. so um, that makes sense then. Uh, I would suggest that particularly with respect to an appointee who is an assistant judge that you ask that association to make that appointment. Um, we we wouldn't be comfortable making that appointment. We don't know who all the assistant judges are. Um, and it is sometimes um, difficult these days to get people to serve on committees, particularly local officials who are doing it sort of on top of other volunteer service. So I, I get, I mean, we will try, we will um, go out and try to find nine people or eight, I suppose, um, from local government who would be uh, willing to serve, but it is sometimes um, tricky getting, getting that number of uh, folks onto a committee and not just this committee, any committee <laughs> these days. Um, and then uh, with respect to the uses of the opioid abatement special fund that, that is in the bill, it seems to us that it might be helpful to um, make eligible funding to support community justice centers work because they are um, in, 
in the towns at the local level and they are working on restorative justice issues and they do end up addressing a lot of cases where um, opioid abuse is a factor. So um, that might be something to add to the list of eligible uses of funds. And uh, as I read the bill, those were really the main um, questions that arose. And I'm happy to answer any other questions uh, or uh, discussion. Yeah, no, um, Karen, I really, um, having an outside eye ask questions, I think has been very um, helpful. Um, and I mean, specifically your comment about the side judges that you're not the appropriate body to um, appoint a side judge makes perfect sense. And um, whether or not, um, and I think we need to, as a committee need to hear from someone for um, either the attorney general again or someone else. It is my understanding that the, the uses of the money is very specifically outlined in the settlement. Um, okay. So, so I, I'm not quite sure the um, flexibility that we have to add other pieces. And so your, your suggestion, I think is an interesting one and let's find out whether or not we can, um, the opioid settlement money can be used for this. Your suggestion, the community justice centers, which do phenomenal work. Yeah, and they've been, I mean, I just, I mostly mentioned that because they have been somewhat underfunded the past several years and um, and they are um, trying to do a lot of this, of this kind of work. Mm -hmm. Have you shared that with the uh, Judiciary Committee that they've been underfunded? Um, oh, we have over time, but not, I would say not in the last, week or so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, many of us, many of the committees now are putting together um, memos to appropriations about right. priorities. Right, that's a good point. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I really do appreciate Do people it. have yeah, questions? Ahead. No, I'm just wondering if people have questions. And we do, we have two questions, one from Representative McFawn, followed by Representative um, Whitman. Uh, Karen, um, last night uh, I gave a presentation to uh, the select board in Barrytown. And part of the presentation was uh, some information about uh, this the op op opioid settlement. Um, they were absolutely clueless in terms of what I was even talking about. So I I, I guess this thing is so new that the word is not out yet. In a certain percentage. But we don't have the money, Chopper. Chopper, we don't have the money. Well, we I know don't we don't money. have it yet. But uh, my my point is. Um, Somehow, the cities and towns should at least get some kind of notice that that it's available. And we'll yeah, we, we did um, uh, back last summer. We uh, worked with the attorney general's office, Josh Diamond, and sent in the mailing list for local officials that um, to give notice that this was in the works. Uh, we did put an article in our November December. Uh, report um, newsletter that goes out to 3,000 and some local officials. So I can send that to you and yeah, I can uh, certainly local. send it to um, the select yeah. board as well. Well, if yeah, okay. You can send it to me. I can send it to them. Or you, you send it out however you want it. But I'd, I'd like to get what you've sent out 
That'll give me a good yeah. idea. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I did send that to Representative Pugh last evening, I think. I, I believe I did, but I'll send it to the whole committee. I haven't gotten that far back. I got the, what you just sent me, Karen, um, in terms of your questions, I haven't gotten to so last night. I'm sorry. Um, uh, thank, thank you for sending that to, um, if you send it, um, Karen, if you send it to Julie Tucker, our committee assistant, she'll make sure we all get it. Okay, um, that sounds good. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I wanted to just follow up on uh, some of the comments that you made, Karen, about the size of the committee and the ability to get uh, different town representatives to participate. Um, you're kind of, I think, alluding to the fact it could be difficult to get eight or nine. And I just was wondering if you could have like a direct comment on what you see as sort of a range of the size of this committee, because I can imagine people might want to be included um, on the other end, which could potentially expand the size of the committee. And what do you see as the capacity or the preference for town's participation? Well, uh, I, our, our recent experience with um, getting local officials to volunteer to serve on a, a number of committees is that it, it's been a little more difficult during the COVID pandemic, um, even though you know you don't have to travel. But uh, but um, I had suggested that maybe seven would be a better number for us, a more feasible number. Um, uh, but it, it's it's really sort of just a, a guess at this point nine struck me as um, that would be a difficult um, number for us to to meet it, of course if the assistant judges appoint one of their um, people then that gets it down to eight so um, I can't believe that I'm saying this to a committee because usually we're like you need to put more of us on the committee but this is um, nine is a lot well, nine is a lot, and what I don't remember, and maybe someone else does, um, several um, several local communities um, themselves joined the suit, and so yes, and I they think did. Up to some of those communities might, in fact, want to join. I mean, yeah. So, so um, I hear your I hear your um, your concern. And, um, and and I listened to Representative um, Whitman's comment that others may want to join the um, the the committee, and I listened with trepidation as to um, the house how large a committee can get and be um, effective. That that is but, another consideration. Certainly, if, if you've got a 18-member um, committee that's getting on, on the large side. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe Josh Diamond might be able to correct me, but I believe there were six communities maybe that um, sued on their own in Vermont. Mm -hmm. So... So we should resist the urge to add people on the other side of the committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like 18 was a large committee as it uh -huh. was. Oh, yeah, that's big. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and I think that um, Car um, Karen's question or point about being clear who these, I, in the testimony, it seemed to have been from Monica or Josh, it seemed to be clear that um, in a sense, this, this will be like a special fund. And so therefore it will go through the same appropriations process that anything else does. Um, this group will make a recommendation um, 
to um, the the fund will be sort of in charge of you know will be the will be um, within or something the uh, Department of Health um, and in the world of, of, of state government, the Department of Health has to present their budget recommendations to the Secretary of Administration who then brings it to the governor. And so, and then they bring it to us and we put our own stamp on it. So that's my understanding that um, it is to go through the, um, the, the same process, but that a group will be making recommendations and much like some other special funds, almost like you know, much like some ARPA funds, how you spend it is going to have to, um, or how you appropriate it, it's gonna to have to meet the, the criteria, um, which is outlined in the bill, which reflects in, it's supposed to reflect what is required by the settlement dollars. Plus, there's an extra step that they have to actually request the dollars. So we're not going to get in this lump sum of money. Oh no! They have to. Uh, the lead agency will need to request from the settlement manager people at the at the national level the funds. So it's yeah, it's definitely a, a bit more of a complicated process. The the scenario okay. that you mentioned. Um, Madam Chair, is what happens, for instance, with the Clean Water Board. They advise the Secretary of Administration and that then goes into the budget and is part of the governor's proposal. Um, and I think we just want to make, yeah. Yeah, so, um, but I think I appreciate your comments that maybe that's not so clearly outlined in the bill. And so whether, whether that is something that needs to be um, changed, amended. Are there other um, questions or comments that we that we have for um, Karen. And, and just one quick one. Um, the comment that was made in our first walkthrough about um, the language employed by uh, towns. Um, oh, is, yeah. is there another alternative that would maybe be more inclusive of say select board members, city council, town officials, um, or, or Karen, in your understanding, does employed by the town cover that? Uh, no, that could be, that's a good question. That could be, um, I think, interpreted to mean employees. So maybe what you might want to say is nine local officials and lo appointed or employed. How about elected or elected? Yeah, I mean, elected. Or, yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly. Elected or appointed, sorry. Or employed. Is appointed the same thing as employed? No, no. Uh, well, it, it kind of is, but um, you could say employed, but I think you do want to say elected. Elected or employed. Yeah. Okay. We have more appointed in our town than we do elected or employed because they're all the committees and the select board appoints them to be on the committee. Okay. And they're definitely not employed. They're yeah. really not making any money. No, they're not making any money. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. Um, thank you for that uh, thank you for feedback that. Yeah. and for bringing that question back up. Um, Karen, you have been very helpful and um, we're not voting this out right away. Um, I think we're going to, um, my my goal is that we vote this out the week we get back from town meeting, just to sort of give it time to percolate um, kind of thing. Um, so uh, if you have other, if you end up having other thoughts and questions, please do let us know. 
Okay, thank you. We will put it in our legislative report this week, so I may get some, um, you know, some comments from local officials about it as a result of that. But thank you for the opportunity. Well, and thank you, Karen. Thanks for putting it in your update because that is a way of getting the information out. Appreciate that. All right, thank you. Thank you.